everybody. It's Romania Black. We are on episode seven or are we? No, we're on episode nine. What am I talking about? We're on episode nine of My Hero Academia season five. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because we have Bakugo's group match this episode. The last two episodes, seven and eight. Eight's my lucky number. And episode eight of last week was probably my favorite so far of season five. Like, the match with Todoroki and Ida and their group versus Class 1B was really, really cool. They came out in a draw. That was awesome. And so now we only have two groups left. We have Bakugo's group and we have Deku's group. And I'm pretty excited to see what happens with both of them. So Bakugo um, doesn't work well with others. <laughs> He's not a team player. Bakugo... Bakugo and Deku are very opposite of each other, so Bakugo's whole strategy is I'm just going to do it myself and get it done, and then you guys... I feel like Bakugo and Hawks would get along really well, because... Or maybe they wouldn't. Hmm. But I feel like personality-wise, they're both kind of loners, and they like doing things themselves, so I think they would kind of get each other, even if they didn't get along well. Whereas Deku is very much a... I like to get support from others and help others and work with others sort of thing. So they're very opposite. So it's interesting that we have the last two matches be these two and to kind of, I'm sure that it's going to be a, con a contrast of how they do business with this, but I'm really excited to see how Bakugo, I don't remember honestly from the manga how Bakugo's match goes. So I'm, it's going to be fun rewatching this and seeing exactly what happens. I don't remember much about Takage. I don't remember much about Class 1B's group or really what happens with the rest of them, so I don't know what that tells me. <laughs> but I didn't honestly remember how Ida and Todoroki's match ended up either, so that was a cool surprise as well. So I'm pretty excited to see what happens. But Bakugo's just not a team player, so the fact that he has to work on a team, I don't know. That doesn't bode well, but we shall see. So in any case, I'm excited to see what happens, y'all. Uh, we are going to start episode 9 of My Hero Academia Season 5 uh, called Early Bird. Again, Hawks. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And we're going to start that here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and let's go. Oh man, this episode was really good. I forgot how quick Bakugo's match went. Which fits Bakugo's personality to a T, doesn't it? He's an explosive guy. Of course, his match would just be a quick one and done thing. And that really works for Bakugo as a hero, too. Because Bakugo's whole thing is like, I want flawless victory. I want a complete victory. No casualties. It's very similar to Endeavor. Bakugo's style of being a hero is very similar to Endeavor's. Where... He, because we've seen Endeavor in action a few episodes ago, where Endeavor it was minimal, minimal um, collateral damage. No one was really hurt. Um, the law enforcement in them had scraped some bruises, but the villain was captured, people were saved, and the job was done. That was Endeavor's whole thing. And it's funny that Bakugo is like, I want to surpass All Might and be the number one hero, when All Might's not the number one hero right now, because... Bakugo style is very similar to Endeavor's, and his whole attitude about surpassing All Might is similar to Endeavor's, much like how Deku is similar to All Might. So I like that parallel a lot. Um, I also like Monoma just getting more and more animated, and he's like, he has character development, what? And it's like, Bakugo, Bakugo's character hasn't changed really at all. It reminds me a lot of Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Um, Vegeta, Vegeta doesn't necessarily have a personality change. He, arguably, he mellows a little bit towards the end of the series. Um, and I don't count GT, I'm talking about Z itself. But Vegeta's thing is he just works with people and he tolerates everyone around him. He's like, he's not trying to kill everyone. Bakugo's similar, he's not trying to kill anybody to begin with, but Bakugo's whole thing is he still wants to be in charge, sealing the victory, but he's also trusting his teammates and saying, yeah, I know you guys have got my back and I've got your back, so let's just do the damn thing and get it done properly. And honestly, Bakugo's team worked well because you had Sero who could set things up and had the tape powers. You had Jiro who could scout and do like sonar. And then Sugar Rush, 
what he did, what Sato did, it was when Bakugo was caught in a tight space, Sato got him out of it. So it was a really good combo and team up. And it's, it's such an unusual combination of characters that I wouldn't initially expect them to be effective together, but it ended up, ended up working very, very well, especially Saro's ability, being able to stop Takage in her tracks to keep her from regenerating and then using that to his advantage to throw the grenades and do all that. So that was really cool. But yeah, Bach goes to group just one and done. Let's get it over with. And then getting to Deku's group. And yeah, I love that as soon as Baka goes, gets over, Deku's like, great job, Kachan. He's like, get out of my way. And Deku's like, I'm not in your way. <laughs> it's like, I love that Baku just, Baku just can't stand Deku. And we know that he can't stand Deku for obvious reasons from their childhood, but it's compounded by the fact that he knows that Deku has All Might's quirk and has one for all. And he's just like, nah. And, and, and he just is like, what is this nonsense? Like, I, I just love Bakugo. Bakugo's still jealous of Deku, and he's like, I'm getting stronger. What about you, small fry? Like, back when we last fought, you couldn't beat me. Now you definitely can't beat me. And so it's it's really cool. But so it's all down. The pressure is on Monoma and Monoma's team. The pressure is on because they have got to do well in this if they're going to win. They've got to win this to make it a draw right? Because we've got a loss, a win, and a draw, and now we have a win for Class 1A. So if, if Class 1A loses this round, then the whole entire thing is a draw. Then it's nobody wins. But if uh, Class 1B loses, then Class 1A wins the whole thing. So it's really Class 1B's loss. Class 1A has nothing to gain at this point. They're either going to win and secure the victory, or they're going to lose and it's going to be a draw. Either way. So the pressure's not really on Deku's team, even though he's like, we're going to win. Um, usually that doesn't spell good things. But I don't know. So Bakugo, man. Mm. Yeah. I, I Bakugo is still... I saw in Crunchyroll where people were like, Bakugo's a dick. Yes. <laughs> he is. And he does call Jiro ears, but he also calls a Chaco, like... Um, what does he call a Chaco? Like, um, cheeks. He calls her cheeks. So Ochako just rolls with it. She's like, whatever, I got a nickname. And Jiro's a little bit more apprehensive. She's like, quit calling me ears. And I'd imagine that that could have been something, like Cheeks has nothing to do with Ochako's quirk. It's just her physical features. She just has chubby cheeks. Um, but Jiro with the ears thing, I could see that being kind of like a derogatory thing about her quirk. And maybe that's why she gets a bit more offended. Ochako just, it just rolls off her and she's like, whatever. Um, but uh, Jiro seemed a little bit more apprehensive about it. And I love that Kaminari cheers her on. He's like, look at Jiro, yeah. I, I definitely ship Kaminari and Jiro together. I mean, it's a guy with electrical powers and a girl that's an amp. Horikoshi made those two for shipping purposes. I'm 100% convinced. Like, I mean, I do like the comparison of Tokage with Momo. I didn't expect that comparison to come up at all. But it's so true. Takage is pretty much like Class 1B's Momo. I thought originally it was Kendo, but it's not. Kendo and Momo don't have a lot in common. They just happen to be in the same internship together. So yeah, I thought that I thought that Kendo and Momo were the ones to compare, but it's really Takage and Momo are the two that are more similar. And they have a similar reaction at the end of the episode where they're both like, oh, we're so sorry. But they clearly they clearly are both strategists. I think Momo is a better strategist than Takage. Um, I said this in the spoiler reaction of last episode, and it's not really a spoiler, but I remember, I do remember Takage being introduced in the manga and Monoma talking her up and then being slightly disappointed by her because I was like, oh, Monoma, you talked her up so much. And then she was like, eh, I didn't expect this to happen, which granted, Bakugo, you know, can be unpredictable. Uh, as per his quirk, kind of goes along with it. But I just remember thinking that there was going to be more to her and her quirk, and it's just like, oh, she can split her body parts up. Cool. <laughs> so so I was kind of surprised by that. But, yeah, you know, it, it all worked out for Class 1A in the end, right? And Monoma kind of got a little bit of just desserts there of, oh, you talk someone up and then see what happens. So, yeah, next episode is going to be Shinso versus Deku. Or rather, Shinso in Class 1B and Monoma. And the concept of the blank is interesting. Um, and I'm excited for us to get more into that as well. And then, of course, Deku's like, we're going to win. And it's like, Deku, you can't be saying stuff like that. Why would you do that? <laughs> Don't jinx your team. <laughs> but I, I think they're a little down on themselves because uh, Mina's like, oh, we can make things 
stick and melt and float and it's like oh we're not good their quirks are not very um they're not exactly as technical as some of the other class 1a class 1b characters their quirks are very straightforward like mina's is acid ochako can make things float and Mineta makes things stick like their quirks are very basic to the point very simple to understand quirks and then you throw that in with deku whose quirk is a bit more complicated and it gets um it makes it a little bit interesting. So I I don't remember, honestly, what anybody in Class 1B does except Monoma. I know Monoma's is to copy, and Shinso, we know his quirk. But everyone else, I'm like, wait, what do they do? What were their quirks? The one girl looks like she's Snow. Um, but the other ones, I'm like, what do they do? And the other guy's name was Double Impact, Twin Impact. So I'm like, does he make copies, too, or, like, physical copies? I don't know. Or does he, like, double damage? I can't remember. <laughs> so that will be nice to see, to go back and see that animated and be like, oh, this is what they do. But uh, I do have spoilers to talk about. And so I want to get to that. So um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you like this reaction. If you have any comments, please comment down below. Please no spoilers or tax spoilers if you're watching the spoiler corner. But yeah, next week, episode 10 starting the main event right Deku versus Shinso and Monoma and their group and we'll see how it goes so in the meantime have a wonderful week stay safe take care and I'll talk to y'all again soon for the rest of y'all stick around for spoiler corner oh my I've I've done some math <laughs> because last episode somebody commented uh, with episode 8 uh, it might be episode 7 too there were some comments where people were like oh like I hope they don't rush through the My Villain Academia arc and I hope that they don't rush through this this and this and I was like I honestly don't know where we're at because when I originally did the math for this season I was doing like the first couple episodes we had two episode chapters or two chapter episodes and I was like okay well by the time if we do two chapters per episode by the time we get to episode 25 we'll have Redestro giving Shigaraki his army but then somebody was telling me on the YouTube comments, they were like, oh, there's some promotional materials about Endeavor's Agency that's out for season five. And I was like, oh, that's after that. And so then these last two episodes, episode eight and episode nine, and then episode seven as well, have been three chapters per episode. So this episode we did chapters 207, 208, and 209. And so I was thinking, I was like, okay, if we do the math, where does that leave us? If we do three chapters per episode for the rest of this season, where are we going to go with that? And um, I've did the math, and the OP makes so much more sense now. Or the ED makes so much more sense now. The ED makes more sense. And holy crap. Um, so if you do the math from, ep from chapter 209, where this episode ends... If you do the math, three chapters per episode, you end at chapter 297. Chapter 297 is right before the war arc starts. It's at the end where they celebrate Christmas together as a class, which ties into the ED. And so it ties into the ED because at the ED they're doing the birthday celebration. Well, this isn't a birthday. It's Christmas, but it's still a celebration. And all the class 1A is together with class 1B. Um, it would account for Endeavor's agency being included. It would account... Chapter 257 also concludes with All Might finding the, the folder, the journal, that explains the quirks that are connected to One for All. So it would tie in perfectly with this season to be the last episode of the season with tying in um, Deku finding out more about Black Whip, starting the whole thing about the other users... Um, learning about Float, which is Nana's quirk. Learning about the fact that all of the users died young. It would tie into Bakugo being connected to all of this. And it would end with everything. It would sandwich this whole arc together. And the last page of chapter 257 says, and then the war arc begins. I... I, there's a part of me that's like, oh no, that's going to rush through my villain academia. That's going to rush through all of, these th all of these things. But then these last three episodes, we've done three chapters per episode and it hasn't felt rushed. And honestly, there's been hardly anything left out of the manga. So it's very feasible that they could do this. And at first I was like, oh no, I want them to end with Shigaraki getting his army and that's it. But now 
Because everything would kind of book in really nicely. It would book in the keeping up with the Todoroki's, Endeavor's struggles. It would book in the whole thing with Black Whip that's going to happen starting next episode. <laughs> and it would book in that. It would book into all of these things. And then season six would start the war arc. And that has me excited. So I am on board with this now. I'm like, as long as y'all don't rush through any more chapters. If you do three chapters per episode from this, from the rest of the series on good we're good we're gonna be solid because as much as i thought it'd be a cool way to end the season with redestro giving the army this actually makes more sense and it's a much better bookend it's a much better conclusion to the season and i'm like oh we're gonna get into a lot of things so next episode is and of course Decker's like we're gonna win i don't think they win i'm trying to remember but i don't think that his group wins i don't think they do I think that they lose and that ends up being the draw, that the whole thing's a draw, um, which makes sense. It's class 1A and class 1B. No, no class is better than the other. And Shinso ends up, Shinso is on a team that wins. and it, Well, no, he's on two teams that win then. Yeah, he's on the team with class 1B that wins and the class with team 1A that wins. So he ends up getting into the hero course. We just don't know which one yet. So I think that next episode is going to lead up and I feel like episode 10 is going to end with Black Whip activating. So I have a couple things I want to talk about. I, first of all, Bakugo, I, seeing where Bakugo is currently in the manga, this is like the spark that sort of, sort of starts things off for his character, the whole winning by saving, saving by winning. And when I compared him to Endeavor earlier in this discussion, I really think that that comes to light in a much more profound way when we get Keeping Up with the Todoroki's Part 2 with Endeavor's agency because Bakugo is a really good comparison with Endeavor and I've noticed throughout this series that whenever it comes to other family affairs Bakugo doesn't like to be a part of it. He doesn't like to be a part of other people's family businesses. Um, when we see Bakugo's home life he has a surprisingly very good home life. His parents are very supportive and kind and loving. They're clearly wealthy. He has a very nice house. They clearly have, they're probably upper middle class. They're like the most normal, fine family possible. And it doesn't seem like they have hardly any drama. Like his dad's the most normal dad ever. His mom has like a fiery personality like him, but they all get along. Like he has a loving home life. And for as much of a little shit as Bakugo can be, he has a really good home life. And I've noticed in the manga that he gets really uncomfortable, especially around the Todoroki storyline. Like, he gets really uncomfortable. Because in the manga, we've not got there yet, but in the manga, um, Bakugo and Deku end up being invited to Todoroki's house for dinner. And Bakugo's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to be part of this. This isn't our business. I don't like this. And then they eavesdrop on, like, all the drama with Endeavor happening. And Deku's like, did you know about this? And Bakugo's like, it's not anybody's business. I know I didn't know about it, but now I do. And so it's clear that, that Bakugo doesn't like being involved in the other people's business. But I wonder if part of that is because Bakugo and Endeavor are so similar in personality and similar in the types of hero that they are is that does Bakugo kind of see some of the dangers of his, I don't know, of some of like what could happen with him? I, I don't know. I can never picture Bakugo in a relationship with a woman, <laughs> with a female character, unless it's like a lot of people ship Ochako with Bakugo. And I don't not ship it. I mean, I like Ochako with Deku, obviously. Um, and I like Deku with other characters like Bakugo. Um, <laughs> but I, if you told me Ochako got with Bakugo, I think she's like, her and Cammy might be the only ones that can handle Bakugo. Cammy's would be so, so like over her head. She'd be like, what are you even talking about? Shut up. <laughs> and Ochako just wouldn't put up with it. So I, I don't know what type of parent Bakugo would be. Um, I don't know. But then again, Vegeta, he's kind of similar to Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. And Vegeta ends up like being really supportive and proud of his kids. So it's like, he'd probably be the same thing. But I, I really get the, you really get the impression from the manga that Bakugo does not like being involved in other people's home lives and other people's businesses. So that's going to be interesting to talk about when we get to that part of the manga with the Todoroki's and ending. Um, but yeah, and then we end the part where All Might tells Deku, you've got a good friend there. That's going to come back around. If we end on where chapter 257 ends, it's all going to come back around to Bakugo 
and Deku having that conversation over the quirks of the other users and All Might seeing them having this moment together. And it's kind of bittersweet, especially if you know what happens in the manga in the war arc. It's really bittersweet. But yeah, uh, Motoba indeed. Character development indeed. I wanted to pull up a couple panels. Um, definitely this one where Motoba's like, character development! And everyone's like, yeah, it's Bakugo. You know, we're doing what he do. Um, let me pull up those pictures I saved. But yeah, um, Monoma, Monoma's exaggerated expressions are wonderful. And then Bakugo just being like, flawless victory, total fatality. It's wonderful. Um, I also wanted to bring up the panel. I love this scene in the episode with All Might being like, I got chills. And then Bakugo being like, yeah, well, you better see a doctor. And then Deku's like, Katra, he's like, out of my way. And he has to turn around to say out of my way. And Deku's like, I I'm not in your way. <laughs> it's like, it's the, their relationship, especially at this point in the manga. I love it. It's so wonderful. Um, but we also have a couple other panels that I want to show you. I like that immediately following that is where Bakugo is like, I'm making progress. And Deku's like, yeah, you were great. And he's like, I'm at a speed you can't keep up with. And, like, and Deku's like, not faced. He's like, no, nah, I'll surpass you. And he's like, shut up. <laughs> he's like, is that all you got to say? And Buck goes like, just watch me. And I like the theme of just watch me. Like that connects to Endeavor. The don't watch, the just watch me. And we talked about this in previous episodes, especially with Dobby and Todoroki. The just watch me phrase connects so much to Endeavor, Endeavor and characters around him. And we're seeing it with Bakugo and Deku here which is great. Um, I wanted to point out that this chapter does end um, at the end of page of chapter 209, but there are two pages that this episode did not cover, and I'm guessing they're going to start the episode off with that, perhaps, or work that around. But um, the episode um, ends with Deku, their group, and Monoma's group about to face off, and I've got the panel up here, and then all my... It's like, oh, I have a phone call, and it's Gran Torino. And in the preview, we see him talking to Gran Torino on the phone. So I'm guessing that's where gonna, they're going to start the episode. And we don't hear what his conversation with Gran Torino is right off the bat, but it cuts to Tartarus. Chapter 209 ends with cutting to Tartarus. And there is, um, they've noted that there's no movement, and that it's all for one. And it's like, ugh. And, they, and there's an interesting quote here. It's like, kill one man, you're a murderer. Kill, mir kill millions, you're a hero. And I think that line's very interesting. We'll probably talk about that next episode. But we have All for One sitting there. And he's like, I'm sorry for the trouble. It's all this nostalgia. It makes me ache inside. I hear my little brother's voice. And that's leading us straight into the power of Black Whip activating because it's the vestiges and it's connected to his brother and everything. So, so interesting. Very, very exciting. I, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. But yeah, I, I forgot Bakugo's match was so quick. And then someone in the comments for the last episode was like, yeah, his match is going to be like a one episode and done. And I'm like, oh my God, it is. And then I, it's funny because Bakugo is like one episode and done. He's like quick, fast, flawless. And as per the show being in total opposite, Deku's going to be like three episodes long, drawn out. No one wins. <laughs> it's going to be great. Maybe it does not in a draw in class 1A wins. I don't remember. But yeah, it's like Bakugo and Deku, total opposites of the spectrum, but I love them. So... I'm pretty excited for the next couple episodes when we end this core. And now that I know that this whole season could end on chapter 257 with the war arc about to start, I'm really excited. I don't think it will rush. I really don't. I think that if they keep this three chapter an episode pace that they've been doing, it's going to be fine. I think that the pacing is going to be okay. And so I'm really excited for that. But yeah. So anyway, I hope you all had a wonderful week. Uh, please feel free to comment down below. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Have a great week to come. Stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with episode 10 of My Hero Academia Season 5. Bye.